Will AI read our minds soon? Scientists have already trained an AI to interpret your brain waves. Also, experts argue that AI-powered beauty filters are potentially dangerous, to the point of making you sick. We take a look at Snapchat dysmorphia and how it comes about. And why does Meta share user data with US intelligence agencies? And who else demands user information from big tech companies? These are the topics that have moved the tech world. Trained AI can pick your brain and recreate images you have looked at or stories that you have listened to, all by interpreting your brain waves. Those are the findings of scientists in Japan and the US. Will AI in the future fulfill our every wish as soon as we think it? And how do we get the best results out of AI tools now? At the University of Osaka in Japan, participants in the study looked at thousands of pictures and had their brain scans recorded. Those scans were used to train an AI decoder model. It learned which scan represented what picture. Later, the model was able to recreate images just by studying the brainwaves of participants while they were looking at images. And it doesn't just work with pictures. Researchers in the US trained an AI model using brain scans of people listening to podcasts. The model then managed to create a somewhat similar text to what they had listened to. Impressive, but so far it only works if the model is trained on your individual brain activity, if you cooperate. If you wanted to, you could simply think about something else and create different brain waves that way. So, AI won't fulfill our wildest dreams anytime soon. In order to communicate with an AI and make it work for us, brainwaves won't help us right now. But AI can already help you a lot if you feed it with the right prompts. How to prompt. There is no secret magical prompting dictionary. AI systems are constantly learning and evolving. Here's how you get better results. Prompt in English. Even though a lot of AI models speak several languages, they've received a lot of training in English. Ask the AI what it needs to fulfill a task. You can also ask a model to write prompts for another AI, an image generator, for example. Use chain of thought prompting. Give the AI an example of how you wanted to solve a task. Add a step-by-step -step description of the thoughts you wanted to include. This way, you might be able to get better results, but always keep in mind that AI models have flaws. Which flaws to keep in mind? AI knows only what it's been told. ChatGPT was only trained with text published before September 2021, so it can't relate to recent events. AI is biased because its training data often is. Prejudices against women or minorities like the LGBTQ community find their way from the training data into the results. When image generator Midjourney is asked to create pictures of a doctor, it will be male. A cleaning person instead will be female. So always check if your results aren't offensive. AI doesn't keep your data safe. Samsung employees asked ChatGPT to fix or improve code. They uploaded it and by accident leaked corporate secrets that could now be included in the chatbot's future responses. The same applies to your personal data. In many cases, your input is stored and used to further train these models. Are you using AI tools in your everyday life already? And what's your experience with prompting? Smoother skin, a cuter nose or fuller lips. Face-altering apps like Facetune or FaceApp are getting better and better at producing real-looking photos and even videos. But some experts argue that AI-powered filters are potentially dangerous, to the point of making you sick. What's the fuss about? Facetuning. Today, all you need to enhance your selfies is an app. Facetune, one of the most popular beauty filter apps, is counting more than 200 million downloads worldwide. And there are dozens of others. Face app, you can make up, Beauty Plus, Airbrush. The list goes on and on. And social apps like TikTok or Snapchat have been offering integrated beauty filters for quite some time. They're being used on a massive scale. Here's what a study that was conducted in the US in 2021 says. 80% of girls under the age of 13 had already used a filter or retouching app to change the way they look in their photos. Okay. But how does wanting to look pretty in pictures make one sick? 
Snapchat dysmorphia. The term describes the need to heavily edit one's own digital image up to the point where you have plastic surgery in real life to match that digital image. The term was coined by British physician Dr. Tijon Esho. He noticed that an increasing number of cosmetic surgery patients were bringing heavily edited selfies to their consultation appointments. Well, this phenomenon is a rather severe case of body dysmorphia, but it shows what damage the display of supposedly perfect human beauty on social media can do. It leads to completely unrealistic ideas of what you should look like, and that can cause anxiety and depression. Cosmetic surgeons have reported that patients who bring in heavily edited selfies are often surprised that their altered photographic results cannot be replicated in real life because it's so easy in an app. So how do they work anyway? How does face tuning work? Beauty filters are essentially automated photo editing tools. They use artificial intelligence and computer vision. The software detects a face and then overlays an invisible facial template. It consists of dozens of dots that create a sort of mesh. Once that has been built, all kinds of graphics can be attached to the mesh. Depending on the app, this can be adding some digital makeup, reshape certain facial features or adding some devil's horns. What is being done about it? While there haven't been attempts to ban these apps so far, some European countries are now taking steps to at least regulate the use of AI beauty filters. They are trying to force social media advertisers and influencers to admit when they have altered their physical image. Especially influencers and celebrities are presenting themselves in a seemingly authentic way online and users often believe that what they see is 100% real. Norway introduced a law in 2021. Celebrities and influencers must indicate on social media whether a photograph has been retouched. In the process, some wanted the law to go even further and encompass all content on social media. France is in the process of passing a similar law, but for both photos and videos. French politician Bruno Le Maire said the measure aims to limit the destructive psychological effects of filters. And the UK is currently working on drafting a law with comparable terms. But apart from state regulations, it in fact really comes down to us users. We need to constantly remind ourselves that what we see online is very often not a depiction of reality. What do you think of these apps? Are they a threat? How do you feel about such altered faces? Let us know. Are you using Insta, Facebook or WhatsApp? Well, be wary of the data you share. The parent company Meta could pass on personal data of European users to US authorities. That's why the social media giant has just been fined in the EU with a record sum of 1.2 billion euros. Why would Meta allow sensitive data to be accessed by US government services? Where else is this data being shared? Who exactly is being affected? Let's take a look. How the record fine helps you. Meta transfers the data of its users to the US. Why? The company claims it's vital to their business model. User data needs to be bundled to process it in an effective way and to sell targeted ads based on the results. But US surveillance laws allow intelligence agencies like the NSA broad access to data from non-US users. European Union courts ordered Meta to take precautions against these laws before, but it didn't happen. So now the EU has slapped Meta with this record fine in order to protect European citizens' data from the US. It could be an important step and force big tech companies to protect our data better, even beyond the EU. That's important because it's not just US authorities that may be interested in your data. Your own government could be too. US Big Tech is aiding the NSA's mass surveillance program. We've known that since 2013, thanks to whistleblower Edward Snowden. Now, 10 years later, governments and intelligence agencies are reportedly receiving even more data from social media providers. Who else is Meta sharing data with? Meta has been publishing a transparency report since 2016. It details the number of times governments have asked for access to their own citizens' data on its platforms. In the latest issue, the US is topping the list with more than 64,000 requests, followed closely by India. And next comes Germany and Brazil with about 17,500 total requests submitted each. In the report, Meta states, Meta responds to government requests for data in accordance with applicable law and our terms of service. 
each and every request we receive is carefully reviewed for legal sufficiency and we may reject or require greater specificity on requests that appear overly broad or vague. So in other words, unless a country's law doesn't allow for user data to be passed on, Meta may indeed hand it over. The published numbers seem to indicate that Meta is actually quite willing to give out information. In more than 75% of all cases, at least some form of data was produced. Which data do governments access? Beyond basic data like usernames, addresses, and contact information, tech companies like Meta, Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon can often access a lot more. For example, users' emails, text messages, call logs, photos, videos, documents, contact lists, and calendars. That can give government authorities a very intimate look into your private life. What is this data being requested and used for? In many countries, law enforcement agencies monitor social media to assist with criminal and civil investigations. If they have good reason to believe someone's involved in criminal activity, they might ask platform providers for access to that person's user profile. This can also happen in connection with public safety, for example, before big events. Authorities might want to scan users' profiles to assess risks. Yet another reason is immigration and travel screening. And here we can get an idea of the ethical implications that come with platforms revealing user data to authorities. Imagine those requests targeting certain ethnicities. You might think this kind of surveillance doesn't apply to you because you've got nothing to hide. But government monitoring of social media data can and has led to people being accused of crimes, even wrongfully. And it definitely hinders free communication. What can you do to protect yourself? The recent ruling in the EU, apart from the record fines, says Meta must return European user data to European servers. But apart from that, there's nothing you can do to be entirely safe from being monitored by your own government or elsewhere. You'd have to completely delete your online accounts to guarantee that. And this does not apply to Meta alone, but also to Google, Amazon and Microsoft. What do you think? Do you care if your government has access to your data? That's it from me. Bye and see you next time.